All right, guys, I just want to welcome back to the Everything College Bowl podcast. Today, me and Nick here will be looking at the famous Toastery Bowl being played in Charlotte, North Carolina. This was supposed to be the Bahamas Bowl before some renovations kicked this one inland. 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, December 20th. Old Dominion, two and a half point favorites on ESPN. Look at these offenses. You know, Western Kentucky certainly has a fun, explosive passing attack. It's only generated about 29.8 points per game this year. So it's certainly disappointed a little bit. Um, but they still have guys that can show up and win this game. 3,300 yards passing from Austin Reed, 31 touchdowns, 11 picks, along with a 61% completion rating. Um, but he's also got Malachi Corley, 75 grabs, 958, 11 scores, one of the best pass catchers. You can always find him at the sticks. He's great uh, in the boundary. And, you know, when it comes to converting, Dalvin Smith, 41 grabs for 436. Easton Mezer has been a good receiver. He has 400 plus yards as well. And then River Helms uh, and Jimmy Holiday also have 200 plus yards. So this is a passing attack that has a handful of different options here. Haven't been as efficient or as effective as they were a season ago, Nick. But this is still largely an impressive passing attack, even if they are, you know, down significant yardage from the season ago. Even if they have dropped off a little bit, this is still a typical air raid Western Kentucky offense that does put up a lot of points and can put up a lot of yards. The points per game is definitely disappointing if you're a Western Kentucky fan. You know, the Hilltoppers are not scoring you know, pushing that 40 like you'd expect, 29.8. So still a respectable number for this team. They have kind of struggled in some of these games. Austin Reed, though, is a great leader. Him playing in this game would be huge for this team. He's a fantastic leader and the best player on the field. 61.8% or 5 points. Uh, percent comp rate 31 touchdowns 11 picks good numbers there malachi corley like you said is a great leader nearly a thousand yards receiving 12.8 yards per grab and 11 scores dalvin smith when he was uh, playing full uh, full strength 436 uh, reception or uh, receiving yards for him three touchdowns easton messer 416 11.9 and four scores for him so there are some seriously talented players on this receiving side of the ball they have some nice pro uh, production potential and when you have a guy like austin reed slinging it certainly is not a bad quarterback you have thrown to you this running game is complimentary at best. Of course, that's expected in this scheme. Nobody has over 100 carries. Elijah Young of Missouri transfer 460 and three scores. Marquis Step, a physical guy, they usually use in short yardage, has 310 and another three scores. 108 yards per game for this rushing attack. Uh, you know, one thing you want to watch, though, is, you know, this is a team that's going to be down its left guard and uh, Quantavius Leslie and center Vincent Murphy. Those guys are in the transfer portal. Uh, you know, the tackle positions haven't been as polished for them this season. So I think that might be something to monitor, Nick. Are you worried about their offensive line down a handful of guys? And they've already been, you know, doing a lot of plug and play throughout the year. So they do have some guys with some experience, but, you know, um, that's certainly some veteran leadership there. Changing centers is never something you want to go through. It certainly is concerning to, you know, kind of plug in a guy quickly in a bowl game. But I think this offensive line will still be a strong enough unit to have success in this game. Looking at the Old Dominion offense, a unit that's, you know, pretty stagnant, 23 points per game. You look at Grant Wilson at quarterback, 57% comp rate. 2,026 yards, 16 touchdowns to seven interceptions. This is a team that, of course, they lost Ali Jennings coming into the year. Ray Mello Murphy, 27 grabs for 495 and three scores. Kelby Williams, 23 for 428, 18 yards per catch. It's mainly going to be those two. Third leading pass catcher, Javon Harvey, is in the transfer portal. Isaiah Page does have a team high 39 receptions, only for about 9.8 yards per carry, though. So he's really been a you know possession receiver at most. They do have a guy in Dominic Dutton who has six grabs for 178 and four scores. Whenever he touches the ball, he's been highly impactful. So maybe you want to look to a name like that and can come out of nowhere and make some big plays. Overall, though, this is, you know, not a great passing attack, Nick. Only 184 yards per game for Wilson. The efficiency isn't exactly there, um, but he's been a nice leader for them. They've been able to rip off a couple of wins there at the end of the season against Georgia Southern and Georgia State to put them in this bowl game. They certainly got a nice kind of groove at the end of the season, like you said, beating Southern and State to put themselves in this bowl game. 29, 22.9 points per game, 4.06 yards per attempt on the ground, 5.38 yards per attempt per play. Grant Wilson hasn't been a superstar quarterback, but hasn't been terrible. He's kind of just been a middle of the road, 56% comp rate, 20, uh, 2, 000, uh, 2,026 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, 7 interceptions for him. Romeo Murphy is obviously the guy to throw to. He's a really talented player, nearly 500 yards, receiving 18.3 yards for grab, and three scores. Kelby Williams, another guy, 428, 18.6, and two scores for him. Like you said, Dominic Dutton's an interesting guy down there with the only six grabs with four scores, 29.7 yards per attempt. He's a big play threat. They can find out get him involved early on. This could certainly help out, considering this running back room is just about as average as it gets in college football. 
Yeah, they've been pretty banged up this year. Kadarius Callaway, not sure if he'll play. You know, he's battled some injuries this year. He's the leading rusher, almost 600 yards. Keyshawn Wicks, 552 and four scores. Uh, he'll be the lead back if he's forced into that role. Uh, the rest of the room's also been pretty banged up all this season. Biggest thing for Old Dominion here, Nick, is their offensive line. You know, there's obviously some turnover going on on the, on the interior for Western Kentucky. Um, but for Old Dominion, these guys are dead last in FBS and sacks. They're absolutely terrible up front across the board. They're not good one bit. That explains why they only score 23 points per game. And, you know, I think that's going to be a major issue coming into this contest. That can certainly be a huge issue. They allow so many sacks. There's so much pressure allowed on, on Wilson. And it's hard to build a strong run game when you have constantly have guys in the backfield making tackles and tackles for laws. This is certainly an issue for this Old Dominion offense. Looking at the Hilltoppers defense, a unit that over the past couple of years has certainly been quite underrated. The ball hawking is still there with 14 interceptions. You do have linebacker Desmond Baker in the portal, cornerback Upton Stout. But you do have guys that are still playing in this game. They're very good. Talik Allen, 51 tackles for him. Kylan Gittery, his linebacking spot, some nice players there. When it comes to getting into the backfield, it's really led by a defensive back in Kendrick Simpkins, who has 10 TFL. Gittery's right behind him with five. So they don't create too many negative plays. Uh, Terrian Thompson, Dante McCray. Uh, you know, some younger players on their defensive line, they're going to look to in this contest. And this is also a unit that's been certainly banged up a little bit. Sebastian Benjamin, uh, Sebastian Benjamin, that is. Uh, Jaquise Evans, you know, there's certainly plenty of guys that have been injured this season. Keontae Davis, a defensive lineman, is going to be a surefire player in this one. Labeling who's going to play is certainly going to be a bit of an issue, it seems, for both teams. Benjamin, though, he seems to be fully healthy. That's going to be a big plus for them. Uh, you know, what do you make of this defense, Nick? They don't generate many negative plays, but when you're playing an offensive line like this, that seems to be amplified a little bit. They certainly struggle to generate negative plays, which is a problem. 28.2 points per game, 4.76 yards per attempt allowed on the ground, 5.8 yards per play for this offense. So there certainly is some struggles there. They have, you know, they're beat up, they're banged up. The portal is certainly ripping this team apart, which is definitely a problem. Uh, Sebastian Benjamin, like you said, he's a talented player. If he's fully healthy, 31 total tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, three sacks for him. Good numbers out of that guy. He's productive, certainly. They've lost a bunch of different guys to the portal, which is going to certainly harm this team. It looks like it's going to harm a lot of the front part of this team. I think the secondary will be mostly intact in this game. They're kind of struggling at, at certain points here, like I said, against the run. 4.76 yards per attempt is not a great number, but if they can find a way to get in the backfield and raise those sacks numbers, they can get full potential in the backfield, penetrate there. You know, a guy like Kalen Gudry, if he can be a productive 47 total tackles, five tackles for loss, two sacks for him, they could find some success against this kind of banged up and weak Old Dominion offensive line. Anthony Johnson at corners, many lead coverage this year, 36 tackles, three picks, five pass breakups. Like you said, the secondary for the most part is going to remain intact, and they've certainly been doing a good job of making plays this year. Uh, their top tacklers and top ball hawks are going to be playing in this game, it appears. Look at the Old Dominion defense. You know, this is certainly a unit that has helped carry them to this spot, you know, 26 points per game. You look at, you know, what they've been able to do. Uh, you know, for the most part of the last couple games, they've been better. They gave up, you know, like 356 and 300 to the two Georgia teams. You got dominated on the ground against Liberty and Coastal Carolina. Other than that, they've been pretty solid against the run, I would say. Obviously, those are tough teams to defend. Only about 147 allowed per game on the ground. They're going to turn to plenty of nice players of their own. Denzel Lowry, good defensive tackle. Chris Terranidad, a defensive end spot. Biggest news, though, is Jason Henderson. This is a phenomenal player. 170 tackles along with 19.5 TFL. That's an absurd amount of production, Nick. But guess what? He had more tackles a season ago. I mean, this guy is ridiculous. That is an incredible number. I mean, that is just like a gaudy number when you look at it. Jason Henderson, 170 tackles, 19 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks. He's just an incredible leader for this defense. I mean, th those are production numbers. Those are video game-like numbers. I hate to use that phrase, but he is just constantly in the backfield and absolute wreaking havoc on defenses. That middle linebacker, he's your leader middle linebacker you want. And they have other guys in the 100 tackles as well. This is a very productive unit as well. Their other slot linebacker. Uh, Wayne Matthews has 121 total tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. Terry Jones, 107 total tackles, four tackles for loss, four pass breakups. So this is a very efficient and productive unit that gets a ton of tackles. These guys step up there. They don't have a whole lot of depth, but they don't need the depth because these guys step up and get the job done. That Henderson total, 170 total tackles is a really impressive number. Yeah, Wayne Matthews has been a really good run defender this year. Sean Osbury and Terry Jones at safety. These guys have been great in defending the run. Tajra L at cornerback. I mean, these DBs are really coached up well. They do a good job of slowing down the run. 
Um, but what they're going to be able to do against the pass is probably going to dictate this game. This is second game. It's about 240 yards per game, only nine interceptions to 23 touchdowns. Uh, you know, they never really got gashed this year, only two games of over 300 yards, only, I think, four of 250 plus. Uh, make that five, I'd say. But they have not been really terrible uh, defending the pass um, in the production. It's all right with their nine interceptions. Marcus Knight leads the way with two of those. Um, you know, a handful of different players have really stepped up, though, for them. Um, you know, Lamar and James, his eight pass breakups, Nolan Johnson was six. So it seems like this is a well-coached defense that plays with some, uh, you know, tenacity in all areas. Um, but they're facing a different animal here. Austin Reed and these receivers are really going to challenge them. Um, I mean, it seems like their best quality is stopping the run. Well, Western Kentucky's going to give you that regardless, Nick. So they're really going to have to be able to generate negative plays when it comes to rushing the passer. And I think the best opportunity to do that is going to be between the interior. Only 15 sacks as a team, though. So if they bail out against this type of scheme, it's going to be bad news bears for their secondary. It could certainly be an issue for the secondary that has had struggles this season. Like you said, only nine interceptions, 23 touchdowns, 5.22 total yards per play. They have been a little weak. You know, opponents have a 140 passer rating against this defense. The secondary has some nice pieces. Rashad Reason, you know, when he was fully healthy, 32 total tackles, seven pass breakups and a pick. Nolan Johnson. One interception, six pass breakups, 33 total tackles for him. Lamar, Lamarion J- James, 47 total tackles, eight pass breakups, and a pick. But they really don't have a whole lot of interceptions, and they're a bit weak against the pass. You see it, you know, 238 passing yards per game. That's the same number Western Kentucky gives up, though, although this is a more high flying Hilltoppers offense that Old Dominion's facing here. If they're able to stop, if they're able to force this team to try and run the ball, if they're able to find a way to have success against the pass and get in the backfield and make the quarterback read uncomfortable for Western Kentucky, Old Dominion could have some success. We have a final thoughts on the prediction. For Western Kentucky, you know, they should be pretty admirable against the run in this game. You're going to look to Austin Reed, Malachi Corley, Magic one more time. For Old Dominion, you know, you got to stay on the field, keep those dudes on the sideline, let it big place through the air. This is an interesting game. I'm really not sure one bit why Old Dominion is favored. Dead last in sacks allowed by their line. They're 128th nationally in sacks by their defense. They're just abysmal, it seems, in the trenches. This is a team that plays hard, though. They lost to James Madison on the road by only three. Lost at home to Coastal by four. 18-point deficit at Liberty. Probably not that bad. Lost to Wake Forest by three. This is a team that sticks around, Nick, but the games they do win is only by a couple points themselves. Like Texas A&M Commerce won by a point. Season finale against Georgia State by a point. This is just an interesting team that's always in close games. That's why I'm picking a 30-24 score. I'm totally on board with you, though. I think this could be a complete blowout. Why are they favorites, though? I have no idea why Old Dominion's favorite, you know, potentially maybe because they have the better defensive players, right? People look at that. The bookies might look at that and say that in a bowl game where defenses tend to be stronger and offenses tend to struggle in bowl games that you might want to take the defensive team. But I just can't see it for the life of me. I think this Western Kentucky offense is still so dynamic despite the letdown and, and disappointing year they had. Reed is still a fantastic quarterback. You know, Western Kentucky's known for producing quarterbacks. Obviously, Bailey Zappi, the Patriots starter, was a Western Kentucky Hilltopper himself. And now they got a guy in Reed who's super talented. I think that that old dominion is going to have trouble limiting the big plays through the air which is one of your key points and i think they're going to be able unable to be able to do that and that's going to lead to a nice amount of points here for western kentucky hitting that 42 point mark and winning this game in pretty you know handy handily fashion you know by three scores i like western kentucky a lot in this bowl game but i wouldn't be surprised a little bit closer of a score but i just think the hilltoppers here as underdogs is a great pick and a really nice thing to throw some confidence points on yeah i'm probably gonna put a lot of confidence on wku closer score though because it seems that's just the name of the game for ODU. They've never really been, they weren't manhandled in a single game this year. They played a couple of FBS opponents and some elite group of five teams this season, the JMU and Liberty. So I'll give them the credit there. I think they'll be able to keep it close winning though. That'd be mind blowing by me. Should be an interesting game though, especially with that line. The bookies know something. That's me for today's episode. As always, Nick, I appreciate you joining me. Yeah, super excited for this game. Should be a nice little matchup between two group of five teams. Yep, this kick off the week. Should be sound. W, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Okay, work is done.